So you've lost the weight, but you're worried about gaining it all back because you think that you've killed your metabolism by eating 1200 calories a day for a long extended period of time. Or you're worried that, okay, you need to lose more weight, but you've plateaued. Where else is there to go? Are you supposed to drop down to 1000 calories, 800 calories, 500 calories? When does it end? Because that doesn't seem sustainable at all. And you're right. Most people will point to this biggest loser study where it talks about metabolism. Hi, I'm Dr. Jenny Lay. I've talked to thousands of patients in my own clinic about health and weight loss and weight maintenance. So today we're gonna go through the study. We're gonna talk about metabolism, how to keep your metabolism high and how to maintain this weight loss. If you're ready, let's get started. So there was this biggest loser study put out in 2016 and they look at the contestants after they have lost all this weight and they looked at their metabolism and their adaptiveness. And from that study, they saw that the people who lost weight, their metabolism had decreased by 500 calories or their resting metabolic rate had decreased by 500 calories a day. So as you remember that your total daily energy expenditure is what people think as their metabolism, basically how many calories you burn in a day. Your resting metabolic rate is your main source of energy expenditure, which means that as I'm moving, as I'm talking to you, my heart is beating, my lungs are exchanging air, I'm digesting food, my brain is thinking to process these words, and to do all these things, it requires energy energy in the form of calories as in food. That counts for 60 to 70 percent. So people always point to this study and was just like, look, this is why people gain all this weight back because their resting metabolic rate was initially higher, but now it has dropped back down. Well, what people don't realize is that Dr. Hall actually reanalyzed his study and republished in 2022 under the constrained energy expenditure model. And so what is more likely to happen is that these contestants found out that they were doing a study and so they possibly gain some weight back. And so what do they do? They go on a diet, lower their calorie intake, increase their exercise significantly and try, and try to lose weight for say this study, photo shoot, vacation, so on and so forth. And in turn, it had a slightly decreased their metabolism because their energy expenditure was so high. But they also found that these contestants, contestants still lost the weight. And so instead of focusing so much on energy expenditure with exercise, what they found was that when you exercise excessively, then your resting metabolic rate does come down to adapt for those things. For example, if I am running a marathon and I finish that marathon, the rest of the day, I am for sure gonna be a couch potato. Maybe even the next few days, I'm gonna be a couch potato, significantly decreasing my overall energy expenditure because I exercise so much with that marathon. Same thing with your exercise. If you're doing intense cardio all the time, hit all the time, and just trying to work out to burn calories, you will decrease your NEAT non-exercise activity thermogenesis, you will fidget less, you will move less. In turn, you will burn less calories to compensate for that overspending of energy. So what do we do instead? We have to look at exercise as not a form of burning calories, but looking at exercise as a form of skill. So you want to be able to become better at a skill and become stronger. We've seen in studies that muscle mass only increases your metabolic rate by a little bit as compared to fat. So burning six calories versus burning two calories for fat. But we do know that using your muscles, moving your muscles, carrying things, doing things with your muscles uses a lot more energy than fat does. So the goal here that in order to build up your metabolism, we want to build up your strength and your muscle mass. And don't worry, ladies, you are not going to become bulky just by lifting weights. I lift over 300 pounds in deadlift and I squat over 200 pounds and I even bench over 100 pounds and I am by no means 
a big individual. I actually been on a bulk, so I have gotten bigger, but I do, I'm not like a bulky person. I still feel very fen feminine and in my feminine energy, as you would say. So lift heavy weights. This is how you're going to increase your metabolism. So personally in my clinic, I always tell my patients to refocus on your goals. I know when we were younger, I remember when I was in college, I worked out to be like the smallest version of myself, to be skinny, small. But now I exercise to become stronger, to prevent osteoporosis, to improve my grip strength so I can do things with my kids, so I can carry my children, so I have more energy. People think that working out will take away from their lives when they say that they don't have time, but what you don't understand is like, exercise is an investment. So you're investing time into the gym, but you're getting energy back. So you'll feel more energy to live out the rest of the day if you choose to exercise. Second thing is that most people who go on these crash diets, you can only sustain it for so long. So if your maintenance calories is say 2000 calories, but you drop it down to 1200 calories a day, it is likely that you did not set up habits to sustain this lifestyle long term. Like everybody cannot eat, everybody can starve themselves for a few days, but going on for years and years and years, that's just not something that your body will allow you to do. So some adaptations that you will feel for your body to want to increase their calories is severe hunger. At a certain point, your body will be ravenous and it will cause you to binge. And then we fall into this binge restriction cycle. But before that happens, some people can experience side effects from severe calorie deficits, such as hair loss, fatigue, feeling tired all the time, brain fog, bloating, constipation, thyroid dysfunction, feeling cold all the time, anxiety. So you're not giving your body enough nutrients to recover. So, okay, so now you're at 1200 calories. What are we gonna do about it? We need to increase your calories, must, in order to be able to rebuild your metabolism. You cannot kill your metabolism because as long as you are alive, your body is using nutrients, your body is using these calories, so it, it can't just be broken, but it is not functioning optimally. So at 1200 calories, um, you can either increase it slowly from week to week, which is say, 50 to 100 calories every week until you reach your maintenance calories. This is called a reverse diet. We have not seen a reverse diet be superior to just jumping back to your maintenance calories in general. But most people tend to choose to do a reverse diet slowly is because they're scared of fat gain. But what you don't understand is that once you increase your calories, like say this is food and you're eating it, if you're increasing calories, this, cal this is mass. Food is mass, water is mass, and when you consume it, it is going into your intestines, it's going to draw in water, and you can retain water weight and food mass. This does not mean the quick jump in your scale overnight is fat. Most people see this, they get very scared and then decrease their calories back down. Just trust the process. Your body will normalize the water kind of fluctuations and it will stabilize. Another issue I have with the reverse diet is that with people who have eating disorders, it may be really, really hard for you to actually truly reach your maintenance calories. As I said, you might see the scale go up and you'd be scared to increase it even more. So say someone's eating 1200 calories and they increase up to 1700 calories and they're all like, oh man, this is a lot already. I've increased my calories so much, but maybe, you know, maybe you're still in a deficit at 1700 calories and you can potentially go up to 2300 calories, but you are not going to go there because you're so worried of the weight gain. As compared to other people who just go from 1200 calories back to their maintenance calories, let's say 
2000. This will help you feel better a lot faster. You will normalize your hormones, specifically your thyroid. Um, you'll have a lot more energy. Your sleep will improve, which will improve hunger signaling and hunger hormones. Things just improve faster. You just feel stronger. So you can do more things to improve your health without waiting in that slower process while you are increasing your calories. Number two, most people who significantly decrease their calories are doing it just by eating less because I know we all fell victim to this before portion control but what is more important is probably your macro breakdown remember referencing my metabolism video number one we talked about the thermal effects of food and how protein is so important remember that protein is needed to help you maintain your muscle mass and muscle mass helps you maintain your metabolism number two we need it to help us recover in our training sections and so when you keep your protein high we've seen in multiple studies that as long as protein are equated as an equal and if the calories are the same isocaloric it doesn't matter where the carbs and fats fall on either diet the weight loss is the same. What should your protein goal be? Based on the American College of Sports Medicine, they recommend 1.2 to 1.7 grams per kilogram of body mass versus 0.5 to 0.8 eight grams per pound of body mass. So as long as you're getting that amount, then you would have adequate protein for adaptation, for recovery, and to build muscle. Um, for older adults, the recommendation is actually a little bit higher because the muscle breakdown tends to be a lot faster in people say like over 50 only do this if your kidney function is normal though because there are protein restrictions if you have like say chronic kidney disease or kidney damage if you have normal kidney function increasing your protein intake will not affect the kidneys whatsoever that is all i hope you learned something let me know if you have any other questions next week on sunday i am starting a mini cut mini cut as in like trying to lose a little bit of fat. The reason why is because I have to fit into this dress for a wedding and right now I don't fit in it <laughs> because I'm almost 140 pounds. <laughs> All right, um, let me know if you have any other questions. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you again next week. Peace.